Please be seated. All of the parables of Jesus are taken from his own daily life. Jesus spent 30 years living with his family in Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. Jesus was surrounded by shepherds who not only had sheep but mixed in with the sheep were goats. And every night the shepherd would have to separate the sheep from the goats before going to sleep. That's what Jesus grew up seeing. Do you understand? Now you do. He didn't just see shepherds having sheep, but mixed in with the sheep were goats. And every night before going to sleep, the goats would have to be separated from the sheep. Sheep are animals who can take way better care of themselves on the outside than goats. Goats need comfort. If you don't believe me, after Mass, Google all of this. Sheep can take way better care of themselves than goats. Goats need comfort. They need more heat. And they need the security of an inside building. So the shepherd would have to separate the goats from the sheep and have the goats in a barn type of a structure, whereas the sheep would sleep outside with the shepherd. The shepherd would sleep outside with the sheep. The shepherd slept outside in the open air with the sheep. But the goats were inside, enclosed, away from the shepherd, sleeping in the comfort of a building, of a structure. Now, we are called sheep, his sheep, which is we are called the people of God. He is our shepherd. We are his sheep. We are not called to live in an enclosed enclave, in a gated place, shut off, closed up, gated in from the outside world and from its problems, from the suffering of everyday life. We are not called to be closed off from the everyday experience out in the world. That's why Jesus says you are to be in the world, but not of the world. We are to live in the world, but not be of the world. We are not called, in other words, to the comfortable life. You are not called to a comfortable life. You are not called to seek out your own comfort, your tranquility. You are not called to a life of no trouble. You have to get that. A Christian is not called to a life of no problems. Now you understand why you have problems and issues? On the contrary, the Christian is to embrace this life with all that comes with it. Problems, sufferings, trouble, and look to the front here. 
The cross. Isn't that what Jesus said? Oh, how soon we forget. Unless you take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of me. If you want to be my disciple, take up your cross daily and follow me, says Jesus. Daily take up your cross. In other words, sleep outside with Jesus. Your place is not inside with the goats. You want to be a goat or you want to be a sheep? That's the question today. Your place is not inside with the goats where there is heat and comfort, but it is outside where there are storms, there is rain. The nice thing is, is, you know, for me, even though there's rain all the time, I can still dance in the rain. Okay? Because I know who I'm dancing with beside me. That Jesus is dancing there with me. In other words, let me put this another way there's wild animals coming and trying to devour you out there aren't there huh outside there is disease and sickness and yes there is even a pandemic but your place is outside away from the comfort and how can you live outside without fear without worry how can you sleep secure outside in the midst of all this trouble the bible says you know those who are with the lord they sleep secure how do you do that well because that's where the shepherd is the shepherd ain't in the barn He's not inside in the heat where it's comfort. He's outside. He's with you outside in the midst of the storm, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of the rain, in the midst of all these wild animals coming at you. The snake's crawling there. Right. They're going to bite you, you know. But he's there with you outside. Now you understand the first reading today and the psalm. Well, you didn't read it before, so, and then, you know, it was, we read it quickly and, uh, and then you were still thinking about the breakfast or maybe the breakfast after, so... Yeah. The psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, he's sleeping there with you. You are not alone. Jesus, our shepherd, sleeps with us, beside us, next to us. And we will be just fine. All will be well. We will be okay. In the midst of this raging pandemic, all will be well. You will be just fine. That's why I need you to keep coming to church. We will be just fine, all of us. That's the attitude you have to have. In the midst of a raging pandemic, all will be well. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. I know my sheep. They know me and they follow me. Wolf comes only to steal. Wolves come only to steal and devour. But I have come that they might have life and have it in abundance. Do you pray that Psalm 23 that we heard today? The Lord is my shepherd. What does it say? Oh, how quickly we forget. That's why I have to keep reminding you. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. I think that said nothing. Did it say nothing? 
I think it said nothing. There is nothing I shall want. Notice the shepherd isn't inside with the goats, but outside with the sheep, away from the comfort, away from the heat. The shepherd is where the trouble is. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. For the Lord is my shepherd, and in green pastures he leads me. He is with me in the trouble, not in the comfort. In the midst of the trouble, he makes me lay down, rest my head, for he is right there beside me. So what is your problem today? Everybody's got their problem. What is your problem? What's your problem? What's your problem? Now, don't say it out loud, okay? I want you to think it to yourself, okay? <laughs> and then ask yourself, do you want the comfortable life? Because if you want the comfortable life, then you don't want to be a Christian. The Christian life is a life of sacrifice, not the life of security, but a life of trouble. I will never forget telling the story of King David since this is Christ the King Sunday. When we think of Jesus Christ the king of the universe. I will never forget telling the story of King David who had a horrible life. Everybody here heard of uh, King David. And if you don't know much about King David, start reading the Bible. And King David had a horrible life where his father was ashamed of him, hid him with the animals in the barn. That's why I thought of King David because I'm thinking of, you know, the goats being hid away in the, in the barns. When people would come and visit, the Bible says, King David's father, Jesse, hid him in the barn with the animals. He was so ashamed of David. But God chose David to be king of Israel. And when Samuel was sent to Jesse, that's David's father, to anoint David as king, when Samuel comes to anoint David, he says, bring me your son to anoint. And Jesse keeps bringing in one son after another, all while David is hidden in the barn with the animals in the midst of filth, in the midst of caca. That's where... David was. Because Jesse, his father, and his family were ashamed of him because as the Bible says, he had effeminate characteristics. And they were ashamed of King David. His father was ashamed of him. He was ostracized from his family. He was taught to be good for nothing. They didn't want him. And when Samuel comes, they have him hidden away, and, and, and Samuel says, no, not any of these, because they had a lot of, a lot of boys. They had a lot of kids. And, and, and Samuel says, no, not any of these. Don't you have another son? And then Jesse says, well, I got this one, you know, but you don't really want to see him. You don't really want him. And Samuel says, no, bring, bring him to me. Because God sees not as man sees. God sees that which is despised in the world and rejected and thrown away and wants it and embraces it and wants it to be his. And then David is brought into the house and anointed as the king of Israel. I was telling this story once in a church 
and I could see a kid maybe eight or nine years old crying as I'm telling this story. And then after Mass, he comes up to me with his mother. And I thought that the mom was going to chew me out for something I said. Because, you know, sometimes I say a lot of things. And so I thought that she was going to chew me out for something I had said. And no. She says, Father Adam, my son was crying during your homily because he turned to me and said during the homily, he says, Father Adam is talking about me. Is Father Adam talking about me, Mommy, he said. Because you see, she says to me, the mother says to me, my husband left us and wants nothing to do with us. He took another woman and has another family and wants nothing to do with his son. My son feels rejected and unwanted. And when you told this story, he turned to me and said, Mommy, I too will be a king. Just gives me chills when I still think about that. I too will be a king. Because where the shepherd is, where the king is, so too will be the sheep. He leads me to the kingdom. The kingdom will be given us. We too shall reign. We will be kings with Jesus. Come, you blessed of my father, the Bible says, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. No matter how dejected or troubled or problem-filled your life may be, how despised you think you are, or how alone you think you are, or how much hell you have been catching, you too will be a king with Christ the King. No matter what you are facing right now, all this will end. This pandemic will end. And God will make you reign. This too shall pass. A Christian does not lead the comfortable life of the goat. in the barn where you just sit around, closed up, gated in, shut off. But the Christian is called to be an apostle, which means the one who is sent. To who? To those who are lacking something, who lack clothing. Didn't you hear in today's gospel, somebody who lacks something, right? Who, who lacks a soothing word, who lacks a visit, who lack food, who lack shelter. We are sent to those who are in need of something, those who are missing something, especially missing what? A word. A word, which is what I'm giving you right now. And everybody who's watching or listening a word, and the word became flesh and dwelled among us, Jesus. A kind word, a comforting word. 
You see, we step out of our comfort to bring comfort to those around us. A Christian is always the one who seeks out the one who is lacking. This is what the king does and calls those who follow him to do the same, to seek the least. The least. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters. What does that word mean, least, in the Bible? It means those who are put aside, who are set aside. That's that word least in the Bible. Those who are, in other words, hidden in the corner. And you may feel like that right now because of the circumstances of your life that you are in a corner cornered do you feel cornered right now the apostle seeks the one who is in the corner to bring him out the king about whom we talk about today is the one whose eyes are turned toward those who are most hidden in the corner hidden away in the barn with animals. He is the one who is sent to not just the sheep, but to the goats in the barn. We proclaim that in the creed, that Jesus even goes down to hell and preaches to those who are in the netherworld. And says what? What he says to us right now. Come out. For I have come to seek out the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I came not for the healthy, but for the sick. Thus says the Lord God. First reading today from the prophet Ezekiel. I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so I will tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered, where when it was cloudy and dark, I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. Shepherding them rightly. That's the shepherd we have. And with that shepherd, I shall not want. For in verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. He spreads the table before me in the sight of my foes. He anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows. With that shepherd, only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I dwell with him for all the days of my life. And with him, I too. With him, I too. One day. I too will be king.